I think we're on. We are. Yes, indeed. Joe Rayo, Fios One News, Lower Hudson Valley. And Joe Chiaffi, Fios One News, New Jersey. And, as a bonus, Fios One News, Long, Long Island. Island. <laughs> Well, well, is it Long Island or is it Long Island? Either you know, it's either way. All right. Um, so, do you know what today is, Joe? Today is the twenty second of January. It's a but, Tuesday. But, but what special day is it? Um, this is the anniversary, I believe. Didn't we have that big snow two years ago? On yes, that day? you did not forget. I thought maybe you had forgotten. No, I had not forgotten that day. You know, at least I know you care. I. I remember that was the storm where I had in front of my house 11 inches, and meanwhile there was somebody who pinged me or emailed me who lived just 10 miles north of where I lived and said, it's barely covering the, the, the grass. You no, you could storm. almost walk from um, a right. coating to 10 inches in right. that storm. And wasn't on that the, the one where edge. New York City had, what, 30 inches? Or? Uh, it was the record 24-hour snowfall, and uh, I, as I recall, uh, it was a te- they tied it, and then they re- went back, and I think they found an extra tenth of an inch huh. to put it over the top. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but it is the record 24-hour snowfall uh, at, at New York City. Uh, there was a time, uh, not many people know this, but uh, and I think I've shared this a number of times. I've shared it with you, certainly. Uh, there were a stretch of years in the 70s and 80s where, let's just say, the snow measuring in New York City didn't exactly go according to format you know <laughs> if they couldn't make it up to the central park they might measure the car tops on 50th street outside rockefeller center oh, on the side of a 50-story building but you know that's that was back then we're we're very forgiving <laughs> about about this yeah. but uh, our um, wonderful little tool that we have joe which is from the weather service uh, uh, at wpc uh, uh, ncep.noaa.gov uh, when you go to the surface map there uh, you can uh, we go back to about 1985 and actually pull up the three-hour surface map. So that's what I did tonight. Uh, we have the, the initial setup of this. Now, uh, this storm came during the uh, El, the major El Nino year of 1516. Uh, and when you look at past years where you've had strong El Ninos, you really you, you were lucky enough if you put down a handful of inches of snow for the right. whole winter. Right. So. Apparently, what happened that year was that we had an interruption in the primary pattern that lasted for a couple of weeks <clears throat> in the middle part of January that brought about a, a, a pretty much a, a solid setup for an I-95 snowfall uh, with heavy snows uh, through uh, from Virginia on up to, uh, not quite to Boston. If I remember correctly, Boston only got about six or seven inches out of it. Uh, but uh, the 27-inch plus amounts and some 30-inch amounts across New Jersey and in southeastern Pennsylvania. I mean, this was a, a, a really uh, powerful uh, storm from the standpoint of being a snow producer. And I'm gonna just roll these maps along. Let me just bring the date down so you can, everybody can see. And a lot of forecasters were wrestling. There we go. Were wrestling with that, where that northern end, edge of the uh, snow was going to be. And it really wasn't. And, you know, this is the one, this is the storm where all of the uh, global models were saying, hey, this is not going to give you more than 6 or 10 or 12 inches, but still is a fairly formidable or formidable uh, snowfall. Right. And this was the one where the, end, where the NAM was shouting for about a day or two, 20, 25, 30 plus inches for LaGuardia or New York City. And you looked at that and said, that can't happen. What is it? I, you know? And we kept waiting for the NAM to, you know, Crash. Could crash. It never did. Backward. And it never did. And, and in fact, the European model, as I recall, uh, brought little or no snow to <coughs> excuse me, New York City until the very the run the very before when it threw back uh, about five or six inches. And uh, that was at the, uh, you know, right before it started. But uh, what some of the global models missed that, that uh, out of this was the fact that the low wound up being much more tucked in to the coast. Uh, the globals were kind of taking it out east or east. Beyond the benchmark, the 4070 benchmark. And the NAM just kind of tucked it in there right along the Delaware coast for a, uh, a, about five or six hours, and that really made all the difference in the world until the system finally started to pull away as we went into uh, Saturday night and into Sunday. And that was, um, you know, that pretty much gave everybody 
at least an average snowfall for the whole winter, and there were a few other snow events, particularly at the coast. There were a couple of 10-inch-plus snow events uh, along the immediate coast during the month of February, uh, which uh, Long Island and coastal New Jersey participated in. But that winter, the areas north of 84 northward uh, was a... You know, not a not much in the way of snow uh, for the entire winter season. Uh, right. We did, uh, I, I believe, we wound up with more here than they did up uh, up toward Albany. Well, in, in New York City, this one storm dumped an entire winter's worth of snow. Yeah, in one sitting. In one sitting. And then when you add whatever came in February or whatever came prior to that, I mean, it, I think the, I, think, I think like forty. I think the city finished with forty that year, right. or, or something. And wasn't that along a stretch? There, wasn't that one of these consecutive forty-inch? Yes, uh, years. I, be, I, be, I believe so. I well, believe it was. I've had like three or four forty-plus inch uh, snowfall years, and uh, that was that was among the bunch. So, um, for the snow lovers, you can kind of think back to your um, hopefully not faint memories of that particular event, uh, and uh, we'll see where the world, the uh, weather world, takes us going forward. Let, let's show. We're going to do the short range, and then we'll take a look at what's coming up in the short range, and then we'll do right. a quick thing with the long range. So uh, the big deal tonight is this, uh, so the quote-unquote big deal, is we've got this storm that's heading up toward the, uh, the Great Lakes. It's nothing exceptional, but that's where all the action is snow-wise from the Weather Service snow for forecast. And here in the east, you know, the remarkable thing to me, and I guess to a lot of snow lovers, uh, is the fact that, how could we be so bitterly cold and and then just literally warm up and rain and, and not only not even not see a flake, but not even see an ice pellet out of this? Well, it's quite possible that tomorrow we had been talking yesterday about the chance that if precipitation were to get in fast enough, uh, let's say during the uh, pre-noon hours tomorrow, that there would be a concern that the ground, that the air, the ambient air temperatures will be warming, but the ground temperatures might still be at or below freezing and might actually cause a glaze mm -hmm. initially or some patches of ice. Uh, but now it's looking more and more like the precipitation not only is going to be less, uh, or at least the chances of precipitation is, is lessening for the pre-noon hour, but it may actually hold off until Tomorrow later night. on in the afternoon or evening, at which time the temperatures both on the ground and also in the air will be long gone. Will be long gone I, I still mention the chance for northwest Jersey uh, I, I, a couple of models are spitting out a few hundreds. Uh, if, if that winds up happening, that'll be enough. If it happens in the morning, that'll be enough to glaze up a few areas. Uh, I, I thought it was worth mentioning just for the, just to be cautionary. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, really, this is an all-rain event for us. Where it is snowing, it's basically a 3 to 6, 4 to, four to 8 type of snowfall in that narrow band from uh, eastern Iowa on up uh, through uh, Wisconsin. Chicago's only going to get about two out of this. Milwaukee will do well. They'll get six. It's a little, the system's going a little bit north of Chicago and uh, up in the upper peninsula, uh, I'm sorry, the lower peninsula, the northern part of the lower pen peninsula of um, of Michigan. So you can look at the latest surface map. This is not 2016. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to bring it up right now. <laughs> And uh, living in the past, you know the the uh, the uh, the cold high is moving off the Virginia coast, what we call the bad high position, and there's your low uh, that's uh, coming out of uh, Kansas, Missouri. You got the you know frontal boundary that runs across uh, northern Illinois, northern Indiana. So it's it's the cold the air that's producing the snow is kind of locked up north and west of there, and you're starting to see 40s uh, moving in through Kentucky. Uh, in the 30s in southern Ohio, 20s to the north, but that warmer air is, is going to make it all the way up. And uh, just just for laughs, for those of you who like that warm, humid weather, Florida, uh, which got into some of that cold air that we had, we had I saw yesterday, I happened to notice that the dew points were down in the 40s, uh, down through uh, central Florida, and 50 dew points in south Florida. Well, they're, they're coming up now. Uh, they're starting to see those dew points rise up through the 50s, and the temperatures are back in the 60s and low 70s. So they're beginning to make some some progress back right. as that warmer air comes in. And all these, uh, you know, the sun, the isobars here on the back side of the high, that's a that's a southwest flow. So I, just, I mentioned with Mike Gilliam, uh, one of our news anchors here at uh, Fios One News, just a little while ago. I said, "Isn't it amazing? Yesterday morning, Monday morning, many of us awoke to temperatures that were hovering." within a few degrees of zero, either just below zero or 
I know White Plains was like two or three degrees above. High slope was five. High slope was five. And now here we are on Thursday morning as people head out to work and school. It's conceivable that, number one, there may be some moderate to heavy shower activity. Number two, there could also be, in places that had snow cover over the weekend, as the milder air overruns that, there may be some patchy areas of thick, dense fog. And number three, there may be some places that might be around 50 yeah. on Thursday morning. So compare near zero on Monday morning to 50 on Thursday morning. And it's a really and we'll probably be down to five to, to uh, ten to fifteen by Saturday morning. Right, because so another surge of the not next, as not as frigid air as what we just went through, but certainly then, cold enough. Oh, absolutely. All right, so the, you know, the radar is pretty busy out to the west, uh, right around the Middle Mississippi Valley to the Great Lakes, uh, extending down uh, into the Gulf states. Uh, you know, it's not the most powerful system in the world. It's it's, it's holding its own though, and it's, and it's moving right along. I think we could wind up probably getting about three quarters of an inch to maybe an inch of right, rain out of this, right. and then uh, it should uh, uh, we'll start to see improving weather conditions as we go into uh, Friday. But we've got another shot of uh, cold air. Let me just back this up because this is about eight days from now, and uh, I, actually I'll take you back to Saturday. Uh, because you could see the cold air from Canada, right. just how it came down into the northeast. Uh, that freezing line got fairly far to the south. The uh, GFS model, by the way, uh, was not uh, good at showing the extent of the cold air no. uh, and, and its ultimate power. So we've noticed that going on for uh, a number of weeks now. Anyway, here's your big warm-up come Thursday. So you see that finger of 50s and 60s pushing up the east coast. But now here comes the cold air for Friday and for uh, Saturday morning, the white area is all uh, single digits. I think we can go a little close up. Uh, single digits and teens, and probably not much above the 20s, the middle 20s on Saturday. Uh, we start to, you know, it, it looks like we're going to get a couple of fronts going by, and each one's going to have a shot of cold air. Here comes the next one for Monday. Now, this may or may not, Joe, I think, set, set a, 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 a table for something on um, Tuesday. And we uh, talked yesterday about the, almost, the, the very chaotic nature of the weather across the Pacific and how it was impacting the models. But oddly enough, I, I, I thought I saw a little bit of clarity show up today. And here's how I'm, I'm thinking. Here's my thinking going forward. So, you know, whatever happens, happens. We get through Friday. you got this, you know, deep tr deep but kind of broad, bullish trough in the east, which mm -hmm. is, you know, cold and dry. And it rotates around. So here comes a, 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 another shot of cold air for early next week. And, and then you get uh, some, uh, some pieces. Uh, you've got this cold upper low that moves up into northern Vermont, if it's real. Uh, I think it might be overdone, but let's just say that it is, uh, for argument's sake. You've got this sh short wave down here in the eastern Gulf, and then you've got this other short wave that is swinging around back from Wisconsin uh, in through uh, Iowa and Nebraska. Now, the GFS model keeps the pieces all pretty separate, but it does swing that uh, trough from the western lakes around for Tuesday, and it would argue for the possibility that we could see a low with maybe a little bit of snow on Tuesday. Uh, as always with these things, the other models have the same idea of the pieces, but <laughs> but uh, today's apocalypse is brought to you by the European, uh, which, uh, as I back up, uh, if you look, Joe, this is Monday morning on the European. This is Monday morning. This was Monday morning on the GFS. Right. So it's the GFS is a much flatter look to things. The European uh, has everything timed out a big differently, and it's got this system that's coming down into the Western Lakes a big bit stronger. So it just basically does something that we really haven't seen happen very much this winter, this sort of full-phased animal aloft. And this would bring a deepening storm, a rapidly moving deepening storm up the East Coast from uh, the northern Bahamas passing to about just over Cape Cod into western Maine. Uh, and also, with this kind of setup, there will, will be cold air questions, how much cold air we would have. But i got to tell you, Joe, I'm really highly skeptical of this apocalyptic uh, apoc I, That's a strong word. I, I'm being sarcastic here when I say that, uh, just to be clear. 
uh, the uh, the Canadian has been guilty of producing one apocalypse a day. Yeah. <laughs> so, and the European's been no better because it it does it every other day. It shows it one day, then it takes away the next. I got to think that the GFS of all the three possibilities, and you know, we'll have to leave the Canadian out. Um, the Canadian has a, a more intense look that the GFS has, but not quite as the European. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, I'm thinking that of of the three views here. Uh, I, I tend to think, given the kind of atmosphere that we've been dealing with, here's the outcome on the GFS, which, you know, kind of looks like the European does. Really, it gives more. The, G, the Canadian has more. I'm sorry, the Canadian. Canadian has more snow with this, with this wrapped up low. But I kind of think that of all the possibilities, the GFS might have the the better idea, where you know it brings this system down. To the from the plains, kind of swings it east, sort of has this, you know, nice little low that goes by on Tuesday if it happens, and we wind up with some snow out of this, but it doesn't have anything major. The European model, and I, uh, uh, of course, we have access um, here. Did the you general look? public does not, but the general public uh, does cannot see right um, the overall precipitation patterns. But it looked on the European. That this thing would be clobbering us more with rain than snow, but you didn't have to go too far to the west to get into the snow zone. And for western sections of Pennsylvania and up through Buffalo and, for example, Rochester, this could be one heck of a short live blizzard. Well, if it was the if it, if was it the worked European, for the European, it works for the European. I, I I did note the European snow maps that I looked at gave New York about seven inches, but it was like this narrow sliver. Right. Actually, the back edge, it, it looked more like a rain-changing to snow type situation on that. Right. So, right. look. It's a week it, away, it, folks. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, again, this is all part of the problem when you have all this chaos in the in the atmosphere, particularly in the Pacific. You get models that, that just kind of do weird things. I mean, I see how the, the European and the, and the Canadian get to where they get to. I just have a lot of skepticism in going to a phased look in a year where we haven't really seen too much of that happen. Now, wasn't this the storm, I think we were talking about this about this time last week or late last week, where um, we were talking about how we were talking about an animal that was going to, you know, heading up through Cleveland or whatever? Or Yeah, um, I mean, I think on one of the long ranges it had some, some a low going up to, to Cleveland and then straight up to northern Lake Huron. Yeah, now it's yeah. got it in western Maine, but, you know, it has it, it doesn't have it, it's there, it's not right. there, it's up, it's right. down, it's, it's left, it's to the right, it's to the south, it's to the north. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not there at all. So, um, you know, we're in, we're in, um, we're obviously in speculation land at this point. So who knows? Um, but that pretty much, I think, sizes it up, Joe. I, 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 I think over the, the I, I'm sure that there are a few, uh, few Facebook sites, and there are also a few uh, websites. I haven't already, seen much of anything today. That are, yeah, but already, you know, showing like, uh, look at this for for January 28th with you know, heavy duty snow or heavy whatever. Uh, and we just need to tell all of you again that uh, especially in if you take a look at the scoreboard and the way these models have been acting uh, and performing beyond let's say three or four or five days if you're going to put all your eggs in the basket for something that might happen seven or eight days down the road, uh, you may be asking for trouble. Jim Moore, Jonathan Sachs, Matt Schilling, Ryan Hastava, uh, Robert uh, Policasto, uh, welcome aboard tonight, Jason Kaplan. Phil uh, Buzz. Phil Buzz. <laughs> My pal. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Stephen uh, Boothjian, uh, Jeffrey Suk uh, Sukoff, uh, Michael White, Timothy Veltman, uh, Ray Clicks. Uh, one month earlier on Christmas 2015, 81 in Newark, Delaware. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's yes. right. That was the Christmas. That was the Christmas where we were in the 70s here. Right, right. I wouldn't call it a snowstorm on the uh, GFS Michael White. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a nice little low. Uh, you know, I guess from the GFS literal would be a few inches, maybe a bit more, but who knows at this point. we got to get there first. And, and, and again, there's a lot, you know, a lot of noise on the models, a lot of puzzle pieces. I love these comments, disgusting and where is it and... Uh, you know that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, you know the snow lovers are getting increasingly cranky. frustrated and cranky, and <laughs> you know if it's, I, 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 we, I said this the other night, Joe. 
one of you know we've had a 10 inch plus snowstorm every year for the at least one some years we've had multiple right uh two and even three uh, and I think maybe in one of those years it might have been four, depending on on where you are. Long Island in particular, I think this would apply more so. But uh, when the long term average that you get a ten inch snowstorm maybe once every three years, and we've gotten like six years in a row, it's gotta you know at some point this streak's gotta end. Right. So you know if the winter winds up as we've been saying, it's got to be subpar one of these years, and uh, you know maybe this is the year that we wind up with a subpar winter. And we're, we're trying to buck a, a string of uh, this. This will. This was or uh, 2018 was the eighth time that the uh, Central Park precipitation, liquid precipitation for the year, topped 60 inches, and every other time that it has done that, we've had below normal snowfall. So whether or not we can break the string with that. Right. Is uh, it a series of perfect coincidences or not? Right. I, I don't know, Frank LaSalandra, that I would agree with you that it, uh, with the 96-97 winter, if only because of the fact that um, I just don't remember that particular winter being very cold. Uh, I don't. I don't. I that don't. was the winter, Joe. That was, you know, after the 95-96 winter. Right. Yeah. That was the winter where... Uh, the, our one and only big snowfall in the tri-state area <clears throat> was the first Saturday in February. Some now I know it's that people are going to go back now and take a look in their records. I think the first Saturday in February of '97, and we had something like uh, eight or ten inches of snowfall at New York City. That really was the only major snowfall. Had we not gotten that snowfall in early February of '97, that could have been the lowest snowfall in Central Park history. That was it. That was the only thing. And I think you brought up once that there was a winter where we didn't have a big snowfall during the official uh, winter I think it was season. either. I think it might have been the next winter, 97-98. Um, we had to wait until after the vernal equinox. Yeah, you know what? Um, what? Since we got some time, uh, let me see if we can... You know, I, I actually thought about this earlier today because... I think there's this mistaken notion because of how the winters have been in the last 18 years that they've always been this way. And I want to pull up some New York stats this way we can quote them straight. Uh, let's see. And this is where I always wind up local data and records. Uh, and by the way, well, while Joe's searching... Uh, I've always thought of the uh, snow window, as I call it, for New York, February 5th to February 19th. If you go on the, the same site that Joe is at, at the Upton National Weather Service site, and look at the past climatological data, you will find that some of the greatest snowstorms in New York City weather history have all come in that two-week period from the 5th to the 19th of February. And for those of you who want to look at this, I'm going to put the link up here in the chat so you can look at it on your own or you might want to look at it at the same time. Uh, it's a PDF file, so you can take a look. It'll open up. And uh, here's, here's... I'm going to just go back. I want to go to the 90s. Okay, so let's use the benchmark, Joe, of 30 inches as normal because that's... The long-term average is about right. 29, so right. let's just round it off for argument's sake and say 30, okay? Uh, look at ninth for the, the 90s. Below, 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 above, below, above, and then you had one, two, three, four below normal winters in a row. Right. Okay? We can even go back further. Let's go to the 70s. Below, below starting with 70, 71. And actually, you could even take it back to 69, 70. But look, below, below, way below, yeah. 2.8. I remember that. Be below, 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 above, about normal, below, 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 below. The 80s, every single year here is below the long-term average of 29 to 30. Okay? Right. So you had one. Actually, let's go back. So that was normal. So we'll start with 79.80. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 winters in a no. row of below average snowfall. Okay? That's how that bad those 30 years were for snow lovers. Then you get, a, you get 
one year where it's above, which that would now that's which 90, was ninety three ninety four, right? And then you get below again in ninety four ninety five. Then of course you get the mega year of ninety five ninety six, uh, and then you go below, 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 below. Before we, before you get back, ninety ninety five ninety six. Right. Uh, excuse me. Ninety ninety six ninety seven. Right. Right. What did we get? Did we ten get inches. Ten inches. Winter. Where did we get that ten inches from? If you look at the. Uh, uh, four point four in January, three point eight in February. Really? I thought I could have sworn that was the year when we had. Uh... I don't know, Joe. I, I recall. I recall the what you're remembering, and I, and and I'm wondering. Wasn't ninety five, ninety six? Well, ninety two, ninety three had uh, ten eight point seven in February and eleven point nine in March mm -hmm. for seventeen point six for the whole. I'm sorry, twenty four point five for the whole winter. And this is Central Park, by the way, which we're kind of using as a midpoint. Right. But since then, let's go to 2000. Yeah, I, I can't remember. 94, 95 then. 94, 95. Maybe that's what it was. 94, 95, 11.6. There you go. That's yeah, the that's one. That's the one. That's the one right there. 95, 94, 95. February of 95. If we didn't get that 11.6. And look at the, look at the total. 11.8. Right. And so it's there it was. It was trace, whole... trace in um, no, uh, December... Point two in um, January. January eleven point six in February. Trace in March. Trace in April. Right. So that Amazing. was it. That one storm in early Feb, the first Saturday in February. That was the whole winter, right, right there. And if we didn't get that eleven point, if we didn't get that eleven point uh, six. We would have had a grand total of point two for the whole winter right. season at Central Park that that winter. So uh, when they flipped the switch in two thousand, now we've got above below. Above, 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 above. Four forties in a row. Right, four forties in a row. Then two belows. Then kind of a normalish year, but 0809 is deceiving because uh, 0809 was actually I had double that right. uh, on Long Island. So you got to be a little careful with this. So uh, so let's technically so three below. Then above, above, below. See now twelve thirteen. That was the year for me with the snow begetting. So I had over fifty. I had fifty plus inches because I had the thirty three inches <coughs> right. from that. Right. And then you've got above, 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 above. So the last five have been above. For Long Island, it's actually been um, so starting with oh eight oh nine. If you use the Brookhaven Lab numbers, uh, it's uh, and and the normal for Brookhaven Lab is a little sh shade under thirty two. So you know. So that's above, 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 below, above, 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 above. You have, if you're a snow lover, you have nothing to complain about. There's going to be an off year. This, if I, and of course, now that I say this, now coming out of my mouth, who knows? Next Tuesday or next month or even March, we might have one big blowout. But until then, if it turned out to be below normal, you still have nothing to complain about. It's it's compared to when Joe and I were growing up. Right in our day, the snow was a luxury. <laughs> You know? <laughs> this is crazy. Although, in some ways, you know, this in terms of the of of weather systems not coming to um, uh, where they're producing some snow, it kind of does remind me of the seventies and eighties. Right. You know, you had right. some winters in there that were 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 on the years that it, that we didn't get the snow. Take out the above normal years. Not talking about those, but in some of those below normal years. You you mentioned seventy two, seventy three, which was. Um, you know, way, way below, but that was a cold one. By the way, Joe, uh, this was the year I was you'll always bring up, which is ninety seven, ninety eight. Okay, okay. That half an inch, okay. That half an inch comes in January, right? Right. But you essentially had a half an inch. That five inches that's there for March came that after, came, that, after that the, came after the first the day, day of spring. spring. Yep. Yep. And it was very localized. It was over New York City, um, out to about me. I think I got about eight inches out of that. Uh, but uh, there were areas, if you went south to, say, central New Jersey, they right. didn't get a thing. If you right. went out into uh, you know points of the west, uh, it, it, it was a very, very small right. kind of a mini system that, that occurred. Nice. So... Uh, the the if you go back and count and go back all the way to 1869, you're going to find that there are more years that produce subnormal snowfalls than above average snowfalls. That's just kind of how it works around here. Right. So we need to take everybody's the snow lovers kind of need to bring their expectations down ever so slightly. Um, 
Ethan Kerr is talking East, about the warm Christmas. Christmas Eve, I guess, from 15. 15. 75 in New Jersey, then thunderstorms uh, forced them inside. A month later, 16 inches of snow and a 72-mile-an-hour wind gust. Right. Yeah, it's, it, it, it is... Uh, that was, you know, it, that was a remarkable year, uh, the remarkable stretch of weather that we had uh, from late November in that year. And then, of course, you had the, the blizzard and everything else, and, and, uh, today's anniversary, of course. Now, Bob Wilson says, anybody remember the snowstorm of 67? I lived in Whitestone, Queens, New York, snowed for days, snowed in for days. The mayor took it on the chin. Now, this is not to be confused with the Mayor Lindsay snowstorm of 1969, but in 1967, there was an actual blizzard warning, and there was not one but two storms, Joe. There was a, a stationary weather front. The first storm rippled up along the front, gave, I think, four or five inches to the right. tri-state area. It was followed by a lull of about a day, and then there was the more significant storm that came up and dumped like 12 inches on the tri-state area, closed the schools. So we had like 16 inches of snow, but it was spread out over a two-day period. But it was also... Like a one-two punch, to four inches, and then came came the twelve, and um, you know strong winds, blizzard conditions, or whatever. Not again to be confused with two years later, the famous Mayor Lindsay snowstorm, um, where everybody was expecting rain, and it turned out to be like what fifteen or sixteen right. inches. Right. Um, the the uh, stats that year, by the way, nine point one inches in December, one point four in January, twenty three point six in February, seventeen point four in March. For a seasonal total of fifty-one point five. Right. Um, oddly enough, Joe, if you look at the numbers uh, in the last uh, twenty years, uh, the March snowfalls have gone way up from the the the, the thirty-year period from right. nineteen seventy to two thousand. Right. Uh, the March snowfalls have really gone up in a big way. I think the average in that thirty year. I think I worked it out one day. You got to about two inches, mm -hmm. and now it's you know you you look at just the last eighteen years. I think the average is more like five or six, right. depending on you've had so you've you've had a couple of double digit years along the way here. Two thousand fifteen, eighteen point six, um, nine point seven in uh, seventeen, and eleven point six in uh, in in eighteen. So. You know, the winter is what the winter is, and some winters are not going to be as productive for snow lovers as others. That's just the way. That's just the way it goes. That's the way it here. goes. That's the and, way it is. Uh, that's pretty much it. And speaking of going, I think we need to go. Okay. Well, so, we've we've oh yeah nine yeah nine fifty. Yeah. Let right me right. just let the folks know. By the way, I know a number of you have been messaging me about uh, my what my free weather app, which is on Google Play and it's for Android devices. Uh, I'll put the link up in the chat again for those of you who haven't. Uh, downloaded it or, or perhaps uh, you don't even know that, that it's there because uh, <clears throat> I've put up a number of posts about it but Facebook is wonderful when it comes to distribution not everybody sees everything uh, but anyway here's the link for it this is a uh, this is a free app on Google Play uh, for Android devices a number of you have been asking me about the iPhone version uh, I ju we just submitted it back uh, to Apple today and hopefully they will finally approve it. There's been some technical issues, you know, with their the way they their um, their their uh, policies in terms of how something is supposed to look. And you know, it's wonderful what tech companies do, Joe. They they uh, they reject it. They tell you that something is wrong, but they don't tell you what it is that's wrong. Right. So you they have just, to guess. You have to guess, and it becomes this ordeal really it goes back and forth for, for for what's been now a few months trying to work this issue out with Apple but hopefully we finally got it down and if they approve it and if Google approves it on their end because there's an update for that there's going to be there's a zoom radar on it uh, you'll be able to put your zip code in or your lo or or the your location or your town and pull up your local weather conditions and local forecasts on it uh, plus, uh, you know, all my website stuff will be there on the app too, uh, nice and clean, and loads easy and loads fast. So the link is up there for those of you of Android devices. For those of you with iPhones, say a you know light a candle and say a little prayer that, that uh, um, Apple, the Apple gods, will approve this. Okay, you're all set. Got I'm, anything else you want to no, say? No, nothing to say. We'll be back tomorrow, and uh, maybe we'll have something more to say about next Tuesday. And uh, and if then, not, and if not, then we don't. Okay, have a great night, everybody. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.